Good morning, this is Hollis and I'm going to run through some basic genetics for reptile breeders. And now I say for reptile breeders, but really this stuff is the same whether you apply to snakes, lizards, turtles, fish, frogs, plants, or people. So right off we've got DNA, which really just tells life how to build itself. And during cell division, DNA is wound up in these little chunks called chromosomes. Every organism has a set number of chromosomes, so all humans have 46 chromosomes, and all pineapples have 50. So on each chromosome, there are different genes that code for different things, and if you look at any individual of that species, you'll find the same gene at the same place. Many of these genes also come in different forms, and those different forms are called alleles. Now, the total chromosome number, ignoring X and Y because that's a whole other mess, can be divided into matching pairs. In each pair, there's one chromosome from the mother and one from the father, because each parent is contributing half of their chromosomes to the offspring. The chromosomes are in pairs because they have the same genes coded, but they may be different alleles. So if the alleles for the same gene are different in one animal, like if the mother gives one form and the father gives a different one, the animal is heterozygous, or a hybrid. If the alleles are the same, then it's homozygous. So if an animal is heterozygous, meaning it has two different alleles, two completely different instructions for the same gene, what will happen? They're conflicting. I mean, do they blend? Or are they both express? What usually happens is that one will be dominant over the other, and that is the one you see. So in an animal that's heterozygous for that trait, only the dominant allele will be expressed. When you're noting this, a capital letter is the dominant allele and the lowercase is the recessive allele. As an example, I'm going to be using albinism because it has a very straightforward, completely recessive relationship with normal pigmentation. So for albinism, this python is heterozygous. So it's carrying one allele for albinism and one for normal pigmentation. This python is homozygous dominant, meaning it carries two normal pigmentation alleles. And this python is homozygous recessive, with two alleles for albinism. Out of these three snakes, only one of them is going to be albino. Because a completely recessive allele is only expressed when it's not being dominated. Alright, so we're going to stop for now. Uh, in the next video, I'll go over some application, like choosing what to cross with what, and using a Punnett square to figure out what you'll get. Until then, good luck!